Welcome back to another learning series with Mr. Knight. Today we're going to look at atoms, elements, and compounds. I know it can be very difficult to explain or differentiate between these three chemical substances. Today I'm going to do my best to make sure that you're able to define and also explain these chemical substances. So what I'm going to start out with is to compare the non-living world with the living world. We already know that cells make up tissues and tissues make up organs. In a similar way, in the non-living world, atoms make up elements and elements make up compounds. So if you think about it, as atoms being the smallest particle that exists in the non-living world, comparing to the cell, which is the smallest particle in the living world. And so, if you think about it, atoms make up elements, which is much more complex, and elements will make up compounds that is even more complex. And so, what I'm going to do is now to define each of these substances, and then we'll get into some examples. And so, an atom can be defined as the smallest particle of matter, which means that anything that has mass and take up space contain, contains atoms. Elements, an element contains the same keyword, the same type of atoms. So the element carbon will contain only carbon atoms. And a compound contains atoms of two or more different, keyword, different elements chemically combined. So within the compound, you will see two or more different elements. And so for carbon dioxide, for example, you'll see two different elements and they are chemically combined. So let's jump into each and talk about some examples. So atoms will be your first on the list. And atoms contain some very important structures that we need to know. And so in the central part of the atom, we'll find the nucleus. Within the nucleus, we'll find protons. We also find neutrons. And surrounding the nucleus, you'll find the shell. And on the shells, you will find electrons. Now, let us talk about these subatomic particles that are found inside of the atom. And the subatomic particles are electrons, protons, and neutrons. And so an electron can be symbolized with an E minus. Proton can be symbolized with a P and neutron with a N. And so electrons, they are found on the shell of the atom. The charge of an electron will be negative. The relative mass of an electron will be zero. Electrons do have mass, but the mass is very small. So in terms of ease of calculation, we will consider the relative mass of electron to be zero grams. Protons are found in, within the nucleus of the atom. Protons are positively charged. Protons, they have a relative mass of one gram. Neutrons are found within the nucleus of the atom as well. Neutrons, however, they have no charge. So a charge of zero or neutrally charged. The relative mass of a, of a neutron will be one gram. So I want you to notice the charge of electron is negative, proton positive, neutron no charge or zero charge. The mass of an electron is zero, proton a relative mass of one, neutron a relative mass of one. So notice only the proton and neutron have mass. Electrons do not have mass. All right, so let's put this together now. So within the nucleus of the atom where you find the proton and neutrons, now together, they'll give you an overall charge of positive because remember, the proton is positive a charge and the neutron has zero charge. 
So a positive plus a zero will give a positive. So the overall charge of the nucleus is positive. Now, very important to note is that the total mass of the atom is concentrated within the nucleus. So in other words, only the nucleus will contribute to the relative mass of the atom. And so to find the total mass of the atom will be the proton plus the neutron. Because remember, electrons, they do not have any mass. So the only particles that are contributing to the mass will be the proton and the neutron. Now, elements. Now, elements, you will notice within a periodic table, you will see structures like this or similar to this. And so you'll notice there'll be a name. So what we're looking at as example here is carbon. And we have the symbol for carbon, which is C. And I'm going to point out how we write the symbol when I put up my next example. And so we have two numbers, a larger number, which is 12 in this case, and that is considered to be the mass number. And we have a smaller number, which is considered to be the atomic number or the proton number. So I'm going to point this out that some periodic table can be different and some periodic table will put the mass at the bottom and the atomic number at the top. Really doesn't matter. What you need to look out for is that the larger number is the mass number and the smaller number is the atomic number, which is the same thing as the number of proton. So within this next example is sodium. And so the symbol for sodium is Na. The mass for sodium is 23, and the atomic number will be 11. So the larger number all the time is the mass number. Now, in terms of the symbol, what I want to point out to you right now is that when you're writing symbols, the elements with only one letter must be capitalized. The elements with two letters, the first letter must be capitalized, and the second letter must be lowercase. And it's going to be very important in terms of identifying the type of element or the element that we are using. And so let's think about compounds. Now, compounds such as carbon dioxide, and remember what compounds are. Compounds contain two or more, keyword, different elements. So if you notice within carbon dioxide, there are two elements carbon and oxygen. So the two elements here, C and O. Now how we know that it how we know that this representing two different elements because we see two uppercase. And remember again, if the O was a lowercase, then it only will be one element. Because remember how do we write these things? And that is why it's important for us to write the symbols properly. And so what I want to point out again within this compound because within a compound you will find atoms of two or more different what elements so we identify the elements and we want to identify the number of atoms as well because elements are made up of what atoms so how many elements we see again there are two elements but how many atoms now pointing out something very important to note is that we do not write the number one within the compound formula. And so carbon, we're saying there's only one carbon within this compound, but oxygen, there will be two oxygen. And so the total number of atoms will be one atom of carbon, two atoms of oxygen. So altogether, we're getting three atoms within carbon dioxide, but only two what? Elements. So the elements will be C and O, while the atoms will be one atom of carbon, two atoms of oxygen. All right, so let's look at this other example, sodium carbonate. And how many elements are we seeing in sodium carbonate? Now you see four letters, but important to note that this A is a lowercase, right? So Na together is one element c is another element and o is another element so in total we have three 
elements in sodium carbonate. But how many atoms? Right here, we have two atoms of sodium. We have one atom of carbon, and we have three atoms of oxygen. So together, we have six atoms, but only three elements. All right, so very good. And again, I hope this helped in terms of helping you now to explain and define atoms, elements, and compounds. So it's very nice to be with you. And I hope to see you in the other lesson. So see you soon. Keep safe until we meet again.